Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to this short message today. This is the first in a series of four short gospel messages to commemorate the Platinum Jubilee of Her Majesty the Queen. From the 2nd to the 5th of June uh, this month in 2022, we are celebrating 70 years on the throne uh, for Her Majesty the Queen. What an achievement! Some of you might know, um, many of you may not know, uh, that I used to work at Buckingham Palace. Just for two and a half years I had the privilege of working for the Royal Household in the private secretary's office. I had a, a wonderful time there and it was a great honour uh, to work there because it was a great honour to work for Her Majesty the Queen, a remarkable lady by any account. She's the only monarch to get close to 70 years and it's a remarkable achievement and all across uh, this weekend uh, from today when I'm recording it on the 2nd until the 5th there will be celebrations and street parties and parades and, and, and flyovers and all sorts of wonderful uh, events will take place over this weekend to commemorate this remarkable achievement of 70 years on the throne. This first little message is entitled Royal Promises because as we commemorate these 70 years we look back to the 2nd of June 1953 and we remember the coronation of Her Majesty the Queen. And we remember that on that day, she made incredibly important, solemn promises about how she would conduct herself as Queen of our nation. And she took those promises very seriously indeed. When she had made the promises, she concluded uh, those commitments by saying this, The things which I have here before promised, I will perform and keep. So help me, God. So help me, God. She realised that she was making these promises before Almighty God. And she took that very seriously and has done until this very day. She was making these promises before God and she was very conscious that she would need his help. That she would need his help to be an effective and faithful monarch. Well, she has tried over 70 years very seriously to keep to these promises and we're grateful as her subjects uh, for how faithful she has been uh, to those promises. She knew she was making them before God. Well the very next thing to happen uh, in the coronation service after she had made those promises was that the Queen was presented with a copy of the Bible. She was presented with a copy of God's Word and the individual who presented that Bible uh, to the Queen said these words, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing that this world affords. Here is wisdom. Here is the royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. Well, it's perhaps slightly antiquated language, but the Queen understood what was being said, that this book is not just any other book. This book is a message from heaven to earth. This book is the word of God. And not only is it true, not only is it trustworthy, but it's living. It's alive. It's not a dead book. It's not simply a dusty historical document. This book is alive and its message is relevant for today. The Bible is God's living word and it is true and it is alive. You know, the Queen was making very uh, serious promises, solemn promises before God and before the nation that day, the whole world watching. And yet when we open God's word, when we open that book that was presented to the Queen, the most valuable thing that this world affords, we read that it's full of promises. It's full of promises and God never breaks a promise. God never breaks a promise. I'd like to read to you just one promise that we find in God's word. And it's found in the book of Romans, which is one of the letters in the New Testament. And it's found in chapter 10, the book of Romans and chapter 10 and verse 13, and it very simply says this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me just repeat that. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is a promise that applies to everyone. That is a promise that is for every man, woman, boy and girl listening or watching to this video. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. But why do we need to be saved? What do we need to be saved from? Well, you know, the Bible, this book, which is the lively oracles of God, which means that the living word of God, this book makes it very clear 
that everybody, without exception, is separated from a holy and just God because of our sin. Because of those things in our lives that we do and say and think that are contrary to his will, that don't please God. And if we're honest, if we're really honest, no matter who you are watching this video today, you'll realise and agree with me that we're all sinful. We're all sinful in one way or another. Your struggles might not be the same as mine, but we're all sinners. And therefore we all need a saviour because the Bible also tells us that the wages of sin or the result of sin, the penalty due for sin, is death. Is death. That's found in this book of Romans as well. Chapter 6 and verse 23. That the wages of sin is death. Well that's a wage, that's a penalty that you and I deserve to pay as sinners before a holy and just God. And yet God in his love and his mercy has provided a way for anybody to be saved from their sin by placing their faith and trust in Jesus. Because Jesus was sent, his one and only son, to this world with one express purpose, to die on the cross. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ came to do many things. He provided the world with teaching, which has revolutionised society. And he performed amazing miracles and, and healed people and restored sight to the blind. But over and above all of this, his one mission was to come to die. And as he died there upon the cross, the Lord Jesus, who had never done anything wrong, the perfect, pure son of God, was paying the penalty for your sin and for mine. He was making it possible there on the cross that you and I can be forgiven of our sins today if we will trust in him and take him as our Lord and as our saviour. Many bowed the knee uh, before the Queen on that day back in 1953, recognising her for who she was as their sovereign and monarch. Will you bow the knee today? Will you bow the knee to a greater king, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? You know, the Queen is our head of state, and yet there is somebody that even the Queen has to obey, before whom even she has to bow, and that is God himself, God Almighty, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He has provided a way for us to be saved from our sin. Will you accept that offer of salvation today? Will you believe in this royal promise? This royal promise that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you call upon him today? Thank you very much for listening and I hope you will tune in uh, to the following three messages uh, entitled A Joyful Jubilee. Thank you so much.